اه اليوم هو لحاله بتطخ يعني انت بتطخ لحالها بتطخ لحالها بدون يعني ما يتغلب ولا في شيء بس بشوف ولد صغير بدعس على كبسه بدعس على شيء بتطخ لحالها يعني بس مش اكثر والشبابيك احنا بتكسر انه المطاطم سريعة كثير اسرع من الجنود يعني بسرعة بتطخ وبتريحها قوية اكثر من القنابل العادية البارودة وسرعتها بتصل فوق فوق يعني اخر المخيم واحيانا عندنا في الدار مش هانة بتيجي احيانا انا يعني معي فيديوهات وكل شيء هنا هم بيطخوا منها هنا <laughs> this here is the Smash fire control system, which is a computer vision based uh, fire control system based on uh, a camera to enable to highly increase the accuracy of uh, soldiers all over the world and basically greatly reduce the collateral damage and being able to only hit what is necessary. It has to withstand extreme uh, environmental conditions. Of course, the infantry soldiers, it has to go through rain, dust, sand. Inside here, you have uh, the computer running all the artificial intelligence, computer vision algorithms, uh, which make this what we call a true fire control system. It's not only just uh, relying on static information, it actually considers the human, uh, the soldier, uh, which is not stable, he's under pressure, uh, he's tired, sometimes he, he didn't get, get enough training. And also the target is uh, usually dynamic, it means it doesn't stay in place and it's moving all the time. And the idea is how do we take all these different types of information, calculate everything inside the system itself in order to provide uh, a highly accurate impact point. And I will just uh, assist the soldier in firing only at the right time, only at the right place in order to actually hit what needs to be hit and do not hit uh, anything that we do not want to uh, hit. One of the major benefits of the system is against drones. It is uh, really an emergency. Again, it is very important to note that the systems are not automatic, meaning there is always a human a soldier in the loop and he needs to actually press the trigger. The system will never fire on its own uh, and that's a major item to, to remember. <laughs> Coming uh, from the world of precise uh, missiles, uh, smart shooters fire control systems uh, try to do to, to achieve two main goals. The first uh, goal is to protect our soldiers uh, by enhancing uh, the distance between them and the situation. Uh, the second goal is to reduce collateral damage, what we call in uh, military language, uh, which is avoiding uh, the heat of innocent bystanders in the situation. We do that by making sure that the soldier has a very precise uh, heat only on legitimate uh, targets, and we do it by using less uh, firepower. Imagine that instead of using a missile, we are using a 555, 5.56 caliber. Usually the terrorists will be inside a civilian uh, environment with many people that we do not want to hurt. We're enabling the soldier to look through his fire control system to make sure that the target that he wants to hit is the legitimate target. Once he uh, locks on the target and uh, uh, the system will make sure that the round will be released when he presses the trigger only on the legitimate target and none of the bystanders can be hit uh, by the weapon.
there's certainly these risks that once you start pushing further and further down the road of digitalizing these sorts of use of force contexts, um, you know, authorities will claim that it reduces risk, but invariably that's often a one-sided kind of risk. It might minimize the risk for the occupying, you know, force or the army deploying it, but often it invariably increases, uh, you know, the risk to affected communities because these technologies for what they may offer in their sophistication will lack um, you know, elements of human control um, and agency that are often the difference between life and death. So at the end of the day, when you combine uh, a, te a technology that invariably removes to some degree, the kind of human judgment necessary to uh, police according to international law, a complex situation, when you combine that with an army that methodically uses excessive, disproportionate, unlawful force, you create a powder keg for human rights abuse. And this system will only, I'm afraid, further grave Israeli human rights abuse and further the Israeli army's um, uh, abuses and the Israeli government's crimes against humanity of apartheid and persecution against millions of Palestinians.